Hello guys. Sorry I'm a little late. I was having some major technical difficulties with my tripod. I still have yet to quite figure out exactly how to position it and raise it up and down. And then when I think I've got it just right, I realize the camera is too far away for me to actually read your comments. So, um, now I'm realizing that where I've got it, you really can't see <laughs> the door hanger. I guess I'll just have to paint with it standing up where you can see it. Anyways, we're going to be painting a cute little candy corn shape. And um, I'm going to show you guys toward the end how to do a really cool and super easy technique for hand lettering. Um, I know that's like the number one thing that people at my parties always say they that that intimidates them. Um, they're nervous about how to do the lettering. They say they don't like their handwriting. So I've got a really easy way for you to do that. If you've got a computer printer at home and you can trace, then this is for you. Hey Whitney, that's my sister-in-law. <laughs> um, as you're coming on here, if you will say hey and say like where you're from. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will try to answer them as we go. If for some reason you ask a question and, it, and I don't answer it, it's probably because the comment didn't pop up. Last time I did a video, I realized that um, a lot of the comments weren't popping up until the very end after I closed the video. And so that was kind of frustrating because I was sitting here painting away and I suddenly realized like, it's really quiet out there. Nobody's actually commenting or anything. So um, hopefully this time the comments work a little better and I'll be able to respond to you guys. Hey Pat. Okay. For candy corn, you just need pretty much four colors. You need yellow, orange, and white, and then black for the lettering if that's what you want. Hi, Heather. Okay, so I'm gonna start, let's see, white's at the top, right? <laughs> I don't eat candy corn, I don't really like it, but I think it's super cute, so. <laughs> let's see, I, I can't, I need glasses, I think. I can't hardly read the comments, and the phone's only like three feet away from me. Is my mom commenting. Hi, mom. Okay. Can you guys see what I'm doing? All right. I guess I'll have to hold it up like this so y'all can actually see what I'm doing. All right. So I'm just going to give it a nice coat of white. I'll probably have to end up doing two coats. But got a chunk in there. I like to just squirt it directly on there because then I can just smooth it around and it's just faster. So. Anyways. Hopefully you guys are getting the kids in bed and going to jump on here and follow along with me. And this one shouldn't take as long as the last one. It doesn't have near as much detail. I squirt some white on my plate. Let's see. Making sure you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, you see that? I got some green in my white paint because I was painting something green earlier and the green is on my plate. That's okay. We're going to do two coats, so it'll cover anyway. Who out there actually likes to eat candy corn? <laughs> Hi, Carter. Tell him I said hello. Um, the only way I actually like to eat it is like if you put peanuts with it, which kind of tastes like a payday candy bar. And I like paydays, but something about the candy corn by itself is just way too sweet. Okay, and I'm just painting the edges because it just looks better when it's done if you do that. And I got my thumb in it, so I gotta cover that up. Okay, we're gonna let that dry for a second, green streak and all, and I will go back and do another coat in a minute. Let me rinse my brush, and then I'll do the yellow. And once again, I'm just going to squirt it on here. Now, with the yellow, sometimes you have to do a coat of white underneath. Either that, or you'll have to do like three coats of yellow just to be able to get it to cover the wood grain. But I actually... I'm so messy. Look at that. <laughs> just slop some yellow on the white. Okay, we're going to do another coat on the white anyway. So, what was I saying? Oh, usually you have to do more than one coat on the yellow because it won't cover very good, but I actually had some gloss yellow that I was using, and it covers a lot better. So, um, I, pro 
probably will only have to do two coats of it on here. So funny thing, I was in town today and some lady at, at uh, Taco John said, so are you like the paint lady? And I said, yeah. She said, does everybody call you that? And I said, well, not really, but I'm kind of getting used to people giving me funny looks as I walk through Walmart because they like, will say hi and I don't really know who they are, but I'm sure they've probably seen me on these videos. So if you see me and you want to say hi, just say, hey, paint lady, hey, paint lady. And I'll know that it was because you watched one of my videos or something and you know me through that way. Okay, I'm going to touch up the edges here. I kind of got a little too much yellow going on, so I'm trying to smooth it out. I got a little happy when I squeezed it out, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, got that covered. <laughs> well, I do all of the blanks for painting. Yes, if you see any design on my page that you want to paint yourself, um, I would be more than happy to make you one and mail it to you. They're $15 for the unfinished cutout, and it's usually about $10 to mail them. Um, depends on where you are. But, um, and if you're like scared of painting it and, you know, want a little bit of a tutorial like this, you're more than welcome to put in a request and I'll get to it when I can, and I'll do the tor a video tutorial just like this, and you can paint while you watch me. Um, I already had some people uh, purchase the witch boots that I painted last week, and I mailed those out today, and those people are going to be getting them probably on Friday, and they can paint them on their own at home. I just got paint on my shirt. And um, watch the video while they paint. It'll be like... A live paint party, kind of. This orange is really thin. It's not quite like the yellow, so I'm probably going to have to do more than one coat on the orange. I'm thinking about doing polka dots maybe on the yellow and maybe some chevron on the orange. What do you guys think? Any suggestions or ideas? I was thinking maybe like white polka dots on the yellow and maybe like, I don't know, like a, a two-tone -tone orange chevron on the bottom. What do you guys think about that? Does that sound cute, not cute? I think I should just leave it like a candy corn. It's making a big mess here. Okay, got the edges. It is like super hot in here. But I can't pull my hair up because I went to the beauty salon today and Takina actually straightened my hair for me. And it looks good. And I never straighten my hair hardly ever anymore because it's just a pain in the butt. And with it being so hot and humid out, all I wind up doing is putting it in a ponytail like I want to do right now anyways. And then you have that ponytail hump and it never looks right <laughs> until you get your straightener out again and try to fix it. So y'all are lucky, y'all get good hair today. Y'all don't have to see the ponytail hair. Let's see, maybe some squiggles on the white. Yeah, that might be cute. <laughs> Needs to be busy. I usually like a lot of detail on them. It keeps it, keeps you from noticing all the little flaws on it. Okay, we got our base coats on there. It don't look perfect because I've been kind of making a mess. So I'm going to use the hair dryer. If you will give me like a couple seconds, I will get this dry and then we'll move on.
boring part of the video watching me blow dry. Polka dots will be cute. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate the feedback. Okay, I'm going to have to do another coat on this white because I got the green in it and then I got the yellow in it. And I'm just messy. But it's okay. Paint will cover it up and it'll be all right. Did you guys know that while you're watching this video, you can share it live and it will be on your, like, on your news feed going live so that your friends can watch it while you're watching it? If you didn't know that, you can click the little share button down at the bottom and share it on your news feed. And I'm just smearing that yellow all through there, but it's kind of cute anyway. I can still touch it up. I don't know if y'all can see that mess I got going on there. As you can see, it's not always perfect. Okay, rinsing out my brush, and let's see. I may need to do another coat of yellow. I know it's not so thrilling watching me do extra coats on stuff, but it's got to be done. I can hear my little chicken scratching behind me. I think they're about ready to be moved outside. They're starting to get kind of stinky. I've been changing out their papers and stuff every single night, and they still stink. I mean, I guess that's to be expected. They're farm animals. They can't really help it. Okay, got the yellow, another coat. I don't think the orange is going to need another coat, but it might. Let's see. Okay. Um, you think polka dots? Polka dots on the yellow, that, um, yeah, on the yellow part. Let me get some white going here. Oh, I've had a white in this bottle. Okay. All right, get you a brush that's like, you know, about a quarter inch in size or so, depending upon the size polka dots you want. And actually, I'm going to have to dry it again. I'm sorry. Hey, Kim. Approximately what size is the candy corn? I think it's about 18 inches tall and maybe about 14 inches wide. That's pretty good size. I mean, there's size comparison right there to my face. <laughs> hey, Carol. least fun part is drying it. Hi Kim. Okay, now polka dots. You guys watching? Take your little, I mean you can draw them on here if you want. I, I usually trace something, but if you just want to do little half circles on the edge. And these are probably going to take two coats too. But you can draw one and then use your wrist and just kind of do a circular motion with your wrist. And then fill in the middle. I'm going to do a half of one up here. I like that. And I've told you guys before in my videos to do, um, like when I'm doing polka dots, if I want them to look completely random. Hi, Jenny. Welcome to the page. Um, I will do like one here, one here, and one here, and see how they kind of create like a little triangle. So then I'll use the last two I did to create another triangle. And it kind of keeps them looking random, but so that they don't look like some of them are too close together. And then use these two to create another one, only this one's gonna be like a half, half size. And then use these two, create another one. And then these two, create another one. See. And then use these two and create another one. This one's going to be a half size. And then probably one kind of in the corner here. Okay. That's what we got going on so far. This one looks like it needs to be just a wee bit bigger. Oh, 
All right, there we go. And now for Chevron, which I'm gonna cheat and use a stencil. I think I want like a big chunky Chevron. And I've got these, if you ever come to my paint parties, these are awesome. They're just like clear stencils. And you've got your background color painted. Let me back up a little bit so you can see this. You lay it down on here and you just paint over the top of it. Let me see what color I'm gonna use. Probably, hang on, sorry. Um, spiced carrot. It's slightly darker than the color I was using before. So I'm gonna squirt some of that on my plate. A lovely sound. And then I'm just gonna take my brush. And y'all, I don't think that's gonna be dark enough. Hang on. Let me add like a little bit of brown to it maybe, and that will darken it up. Because it's not hardly showing up on top of the other orange. So I'm just gonna do a drop or two of brown in the spiced carrot and stir it in. It's gonna take more than a drop or two. You never know, you just gotta play around with it. Just go, I usually added a drop or two at a time because sometimes if you just dump a bunch in there, then next thing you know, you've got an ugly mess of a color that you didn't want, and it's just wasteful. Okay, so that's a little darker. Let's see about that. That's better. Okay. See, so I don't know if y'all can see this or not. Let's see, we got a couple of questions. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Carol. Um, you, on these stencils, you just paint directly on top of them, and then you just peel them up, so they're super quick. But like at home, if you wanted to do chevron and you didn't have one of these stencils, you could do the same technique that I'm gonna show you in a minute for the lettering. And I'll kind of explain that when I get ready to do it because it's hard to explain unless I'm showing you. But this goes pretty quick because you're just slapping it on top of the stencil. But if you've ever seen my video or my pictures from my paint parties and have wondered how the people got their chevron so perfect, it's these awesome stencils. Um, I didn't buy them anywhere. I actually bought the plastic like on Amazon and I have a Cricut. And so I cut the plastic with my Cricut and made my own stencils. I made some the other day that are like zebra print and leopard print and they're really cute. I just haven't tried them out yet, so I'm kind of interested to see how they turn out. Okay, got that done. Let me set this over here. Try not to get paint on everything. Okay, let me show you. So far, the chevron needs touching up just a little bit. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like the patterns? And we can even busy them up even more by adding some highlights to them. So these paintbrushes are in bad shape. Okay, I'm gonna touch up the chevron real quick right here. Just kind of straighten it out where it got kind of wily. It's just real subtle. Like I'm, I like that it doesn't like distract from the orange too much. It's just kind of a slightly darker orange. Okay, we got that. And I think I'm gonna leave the white alone because you're gonna have the big bow up here anyways and it doesn't need to be busy. So if you'll give me a second, I'm gonna do a real quick second coat on these polka dots, and then we'll add some details. And I need to touch that up again too because that yellow got all in the mess. I'm glad that this video, you can only see like three feet behind me of my house because if you could see the rest of it, it's topsy-turvy. There are books all over the floor and stuff all over the dining room table because this is this dining room table has pretty much been my craft room this past week. Okay. I wish I could see the comments better. Yeah, I know, Mom. It needs some black. Hold, hold your horses. I'll get it on there in a minute. I know it's like yawn while she's doing the second coat. It's kind of boring.
So if y'all were watching my video the last time, I was asking for advice on Halloween costumes for my daughter. And Carol Chapman, she's on here, she commented that I should do her as a Cabbage Patch Kid. And I totally didn't even think of that. But I'd seen that before on Pinterest and thought that would always be cute. But I had forgotten about it. Well, a friend of mine does crocheting, Cara Bynum. And she is crocheting me a really cute little wig for her to wear that's going to look like Cabbage Patch hair. Interesting thing will be to see if it actually stays on. <laughs> Joanne Hutchison it looks yummy. You must like to eat candy corn. I don't like to eat candy corn. Okay. Let me find a skinny brush. I like that. And we're going to do some black. Oh, hang on. I got a bottle that's not open yet. I hate these little things. They're always real tricky to get off. Okay. We're ready to go now. Okay. Actually, I think I'm going to do a little bit of gray first. The gray is mm -hmm. called pewter gray. And I'm just going to do um, some little highlights inside the polka dots with the gray. And the reason I'm using the gray instead of the black is because um, I'm going to be doing the words in black and I didn't want it to be too distracting. So you're just going to like do a little swoop. It doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same size and they don't all have to be going the same direction. It just kind of makes it look like it's got like a little bit of a 3D effect. And then I'm going to take the white and do Some more white and do some little highlights on the chevron down here just kind of going like this can you see that just go up and down across the chevron <clears throat> don't try to make them all perfect or try to make them all the same width or the same amount of paint. It will look more artsy if you just kind of slap them across there without worrying about it too much. Okay, we got that done. Now, for the, well, I think I want to do, as y'all can see, I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. Okay, I'm getting another brush with some more gray, and I'm just going to kind of do like a little border on these colors. I like that. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have to dry it real quick and then we'll, I'll show you the lettering technique. <laughs> It has to be absolutely dry in order to do this lettering technique. Otherwise, the paper is going to stick to your door hanger and it's going to mess it up. So, we want it to be really dry. Okay. Okay. What you do is, you take whatever words you want. I did trick or treat. You type it up on your computer, you choose a cute little font. Can you guys see that? What about squiggles? Where am I supposed to put the squiggles? I'm kind of confused what squiggles are. <laughs> you mean like little swirls? <laughs> I'm confused. Anyways, you type it up on your computer and you print it out. The reason you can barely see it is I did it in a really light gray and I do that so that um, Number one, it's easier for me to kind of trace around because if you do it in black, it's hard to see the ink of the pen. And two, because it's easy for you guys to watch me trace it if it's in gray. So I've got it printed out and I'm just going to sit it on here. Just kind of line it up however. I can't see that. I'm going to line it up however I can. Oh, I forgot to explain the, the most important part. Take the back of it and cover it with like um, pencil lead. 
which I bought at Hobby Lobby, these little sticks of lead and just use those because they cover more area than just a pencil would. But cover the entire back part of the wording with pencil lead. And then you're going to lay it down on here. And I think I want it down lower since I'm going to have my bow up top. And then the next thing you need is just a regular ink pen. And what you're going to do, I don't know if you guys can see this, you're going to trace around the outer edge of each letter. And while you're doing that, it's going to push that pencil lead that's underneath the paper down onto the door hanger. So that when you're completely done, you'll lift it up and you will have your letters drawn out in pencil underneath. And then all you'll have to do is paint inside the letters. It's kind of like just, it's kind of like a stencil, but it's um, tracing and it's rubbing the pencil lead down onto the door hanger. I'm having a hard time explaining this. Um, the reason I said you could use this if you wanted to do chevron is because if, if you could, you could find a chevron image like on Google and you could print it out and you could trace it just like this to create the chevron pattern on your door hanger. You could really do that with any kind of pattern or any kind of lettering or like a shape if you wanted like the shape of a pumpkin or whatever and you didn't feel comfortable drawing a pumpkin. You could use this technique. I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to remember the name of this font. I think it's Mr. Giggles or something weird like that. It's one of those, it's, it's, it's kind of like a scrapbooking font. I can't remember the name of it. But I'm sure if you Google Mr. and the word Giggles, it will come up with the right font even though I'm probably not saying it right. Okay, I'm tracing every letter around the outside part of each letter. And you know those um, chalk pictures that you see like on Facebook where it looks like they've written in chalk and some fancy lettering? This is probably the technique that they're using for that too, so that it looks like a certain kind of font. Okay, so before I peel it up, I want to show you I have traced the outside of every letter and I'm just going to peel it up and I'm going to have to do some touching up because I did that before the paint was completely dry. But let me see if you guys can see. See how the letters are on there? And of course they're appearing to you backwards because I'm using my phone in selfie mode and on Facebook Live when you're using selfie mode, it flips everything in reverse. <laughs> okay. So the next thing you're going to do, which I didn't show you that, see how some of the pencil lead kind of got off on the yellow? I can just take some yellow and touch that up. It's not a big deal. Or I could probably, even when I was completely done and it was completely dry, I could probably take like a wet sponge and just wash that off because all it is is pencil lead. It'll come right off. Okay. Next thing you need to do is just get like a skinny little brush. This one's kind of square on the end. And you're just going to paint inside each of the letters. Let me see if I can back up far enough for you to see. And you're pretty much just painting inside the pencil lines. This was the technique that I used back when I first started doing all of this. Before I was super comfortable with hand lettering. But over time, I, after just doing a lot of these, I've gotten more comfortable with a paintbrush. And so I've kind of not, I've strayed away from using this technique very much. I still use it if I want to have something have a certain kind of font. So you see there's my first letter. And then you just keep going until you get them all filled in. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate your comments, guys. I'm not sure how many people are commenting, but I'm sure it'll pop up a bunch of them after I get off of here. I don't know if you guys heard me at the beginning of the video. I said that last time a lot of the comments were hidden or weren't coming up until the end of the video. And then all of a sudden, I saw all these comments that never even showed up while I was doing the live video. So sometimes they get kind of lagging or whatever and they don't come up.
I wish like I had a cameraman that could zoom in on this for me so you guys could see it a little better while I'm doing it. And I'm kind of doing it upside down here. It would probably be easier if I were doing it right side up, but I'm trying to do it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Thank you, Pamela. I appreciate it. Um, if anybody wants to do one of these um, candy corn door hangers, you can order one from me for $15. If you're local, um, I can just meet you and give it to you. If you're not, I'll be happy to ship it to you. Um, shipping's usually about $10. So just shoot me a quick message and say, hey, you know, I want to order a candy corn cutout. Or if you want to order one completely finished that, for, you know, that I've painted, they are $35 plus shipping. And so you can let me know and I can paint one and get it shipped to you. Usually I can get it done within a week to two weeks. Right now I've got a bunch of orders going, so it'll probably be more on the two-week side. But I'd be happy to paint one for you if you want one for your door. These would also be really cute stuck inside of a big wreath for fall. I'm not real great at wreath making. I'm better at painting than I am flower arranging and stuff like that. Which they had a class in high school for floral arrangement, but I didn't take it. And I thought back then, that's so dumb. Like, why would you take a floral arrangement class? All you gotta do is stick some flowers in a vase. But it's funny how when you turn 30, you're like, that would have been a useful skill. <laughs> but when you're 16, you don't really see it as a skill. You see it as like a silly class that why would you need that? But now I'm kind of wishing I had even taken, like, automotive maintenance, because then I could even change my oil. Oh, well. I'll just pay someone else to do it. <laughs> That's what a lot of my customers say. They're like, yeah, I could probably paint that, but I'd rather pay you to do it. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easier to let somebody else do it, and you just enjoy the results. We're almost done. I'm still going to do like a few little, maybe that's what my mom meant. She was talking about squiggles. She said it needed squiggles. So maybe she meant around the edges. I'm still going to do that. It's just going to be a minute because I wanted to get my words on here first. I like to do the little highlights and squiggles at the very end. Yeah, I mean, said so to make it look so easy. I appreciate that. Um, it's only because I do this a lot, a lot. I do two to three paint parties a week, and so I'm helping everybody on their paint party at their paint parties. So I get lots of practice. But if you're in the Murray, Kentucky area, and you would like to attend a paint party or host one yourself, um, just contact me, and we'll get you get it scheduled. Um, uh, at the top of my page is my schedule. It's got some dates that are available for paint parties, so you can like look at that and pick a date. Um, as the hostess, you would just need to find a place to have it. I don't have like a location that people come to for the party. I come to you, so you would just pick a spot to have it, like church fellowship room or your house even, if you've got plenty of room, and um, or even a restaurant. And we would, I will bring everything and you would just invite your friends and I will show you how to paint whatever it is you want to paint. Everybody gets to choose what they want to paint. That's the, the good thing about it. You aren't like stuck everybody painting a pumpkin or everybody painting the same thing. Everybody gets to choose what they want to paint. Almost done guys. Hang in there. It's always easier if you like if you'll notice I'm like continuously dipping my brush in the paint but if you keep your brush nice and loaded up with paint then you won't have to go over the same spot over and over again it just kind of makes for a smoother finish so I keep re-dipping my brush almost after every stroke 
just about done. Okay. There you have it. It looks just like the font. Mr. Giggles or whatever it's called. Okay, and then last but not least, the swirls my mother said it needed. I knew it needed something, but it was just going to be at the end. Okay, and then I'm going to take the black. I forget I have to hold it so you guys can see. And just kind of do like willy-nilly, as they say, all the way up. And don't worry too much about it being straight. It's actually cuter if it's kind of squiggly or wavy. Kind of go just around the edges and it just kind of gives it a little bit of something extra. And I like to, like, when I pick up my brush to do another stroke, I like to do like a couple of little dots. I don't know why, it's just cute. So like since I picked up my brush there, I'll do a dot. Sometimes I do two dots. And then I'll just do another one like that. There's the thing, the finished product. Okay, I've already made the bow because it's just easier making it ahead of time. If you don't know how to make these bows, go to the video section on my um, page and scroll down. And my very first Facebook Live video that I did, we made these bows. They're just made with uh, six inch burlap ribbon and some little pieces of ribbon. They're super easy to make. All you gotta do is pinch everything together and tie a knot around it. Super easy. Okay, and I'm just gonna staple this on and then we'll be done. Well, I'm gonna have to go clean up that lead mess right there, but it'll be fine. And if you guys wanna see like a finished picture of this hanging on my door, I will post a picture of it tomorrow when the sun is shining and you guys can see what it looks like, like the complete finished product. So anyways, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you guys hanging in to the very end. Um, if anybody uses this technique, I would love to see your finished product. Just post it to my page and say, hey, look what I did. Thank you for teaching me or whatever, because I would love to know um, how many of you guys actually use this. So thanks for stopping by. I'm Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. That's a mouthful. Um, you guys have a good night. Thanks.